then the next shortage will be electricity. So I think next year you'll see the electricity, that they just can't find enough electricity to run all the chips. There is a capital question of like, okay, at what point does it stop being worth it to put the capital in? But I actually think before we hit that, you're gonna run into energy constraints. There's a dark side of AI that the billionaires know that the average American doesn't. AI is creating an energy crisis that's gonna cause your electricity bill to explode. Today, we'll uncover this dark reality and propose some solutions for how we avoid this dark future. Let's usher in the AI revolution in a sensible way. Is there a bubble in the data center business given some of the valuations? I mean, the question is, and we, we all watch the reports, you know, for the big tech companies, yep. how much, what's their capital spend going to be in the following years? But this asset class is, is very unique for real estate. The, each one of these buildings could cost four or five billion dollars. You're talking about power numbers that we've never in, encountered in the real estate business. 100 megawatts, 200, up 500 megawatts. Those buildings, it's so what's amazing about them, power, as difficult it is to get, becomes the uh, constraint to new right. developments. You don't have oversupply of these data centers. And for the most part, they're built leased to one of the big hyperscale tech companies. The two obvious questions that should come from this are, where are we gonna get the energy from and who's gonna pay for it? The sheer amount of resources that are needed to provide compute for another supercomputer are just gonna rob us of everyday energy applications like our appliances or our lights or the ability to charge a cell phone. Don't take my word for it. The billionaires already know that we don't have enough energy to fuel this AI revolution. We do need way more energy in the world than I think we thought we needed before. My, my whole model of the world is that the two important currencies of the future are compute slash intelligence and energy. Um, you know, the ideas that we want and the ability to make stuff happen and uh, the ability to like run the compute. And I think we still don't appreciate the energy needs of this technology. Let's go back to this quote that we started the video with from Elon Musk. They just won't be able to find enough electricity to power these chips. Well, Tesla is one of the main contributors to this AI energy crisis that we are barreling into right now. The Tesla Gigafactory in Austin, Texas is already the largest car manufacturing plant in the country and soon to be one of the largest data centers in the world to train models for their full self-driving capabilities in their Tesla cars. In a tweet earlier this summer, he announced that they're building for 130 megawatts of capacity and soon to be tripling that number in just 18 months. This past weekend, he announced Colossus, the largest training model and AI data center in the world. He announced these plans in conjunction with their partners, NVIDIA and Dell, and they will have over 100,000 of the H100 chips, which is NVIDIA's chip in the most powerful AI chip in the world. The crazy part about this is they said they did it in 122 days. This is by far the fastest that anyone's been able to stand up this amount of energy and compute for an AI data center project to date. And they're not the only ones. We haven't even gone into other projects from Meta or Google or any of the other large tech giants. The irony is these large tech giants were the main ones talking about how we need to conserve energy, how we need to go net carbon zero. And yet they're the main culprits in this AI energy crisis that we're heading headfirst into. I dug into Google's 2024 sustainability report. And what's interesting about the sustainability report is there's an AI insights button, which produces more emissions and makes us less sustainable. But when I asked it the question of, has Google increased its carbon emissions? Here's what it had to say. Google has been cost planning us and saying that they're doing good for the environment when actually their carbon emissions have increased 47% from 2019 to 2023. And you know what? Microsoft's sustainability report wasn't much better. Microsoft has increased their carbon emissions from 2020 to 2023 by 30%. What's funny is that when you look at this chart, their carbon emissions are growing 10% a year, and yet they expect to go negative carbon emissions by 2030. I'm not good at math, but that math doesn't math to me. The problem is pretty simple. Mark Mills, the author of the Cloud Revolution and AI Energy Expert, said it in a pretty simple manner that we can easily understand. In dollar terms, uh, we're spending more money building infrastructure for the cloud globally, capital, than all the electric utilities in the world are spending combined. 
to build new power plants? In a nutshell, it's pretty simple. Digital transformation is outpacing physical transformation. According to an Eastel Energy study, the amount of electricity production capacity is growing by about 2% a year through 2035. But the AI energy demands are growing at 23% a year. And if you think that number is crazy, Boston Consulting Group's numbers aren't that far off. They're projecting 50 to 20% growth a year from now to 2030. The capacity for AI data center energy usage is expected to triple to 7.5% of total energy consumption. Why is that? Well, there's two types of training. There's training a model, which has to be updated daily and retrained every time there's new data and there's new information. And this takes about as much energy as building a skyscraper. This training is electricity intensive, taking about 1300 kilowatt hours per day to train one of these models. Then there's inference, which means that the model that's continually being updated and trained is continually running in the background at all times. That's why a chat GBT search takes three to 30 times as much energy as a basic Google query. And if any of you have ever used any of these sort of models in the past, you know that it doesn't nail the answer on the first time, contributing to a larger number of queries than a general Google search, which has more results on a single page. And the crazy thing about all of this, this is just the AI data center's impact on our energy usage. We're not even considering the fact that we want to have more electric vehicles and we want to onshore the manufacturing that's gone overseas to China over the past several decades. So what's the solution to our AI energy crisis? I've heard lots of things from our folks that have been talking about the green revolution for several decades, but there's actually a real practical and already implemented solution happening all over the world that is bootstrapping AI generation and renewable energy projects globally. That's Bitcoin mining. Bitcoin mining helps to bootstrap the AI revolution in three key ways. Number one, it helps to make financing these projects more feasible. You see, when you're standing up a large power project or a renewable energy project, typically that energy source is far away from city centers and people that actually buy and use that energy. And so the further that energy is away from these people or the buyers of that energy, the more infrastructure you have to put in place. Transformers, lines, cables, all of these things to transport that energy from the source to the buyer. Then you also have the fact that energy dissipates the more distance that it travels. And so the main issue when financing these projects is you don't have a ready and early buyer for this energy until you've sunk a ton of money into the project. Insert Bitcoin mining. They bring the mining machines right to the source of the energy and they have an always on demand buyer of this electricity. And so you're able to actually fund and get profits from projects much sooner than you otherwise would. Win-win for everybody. Number two, Bitcoin miners provide utilities and energy providers and producers a secondary revenue source. Let's take a look at this chart. Throughout a typical day, peak hours for energy and the cost of energy are most expensive between 8 a.m. and 10 p.m., with the most costly part of the day being between 4 p.m. and 10 p.m. when we all get off of work, or if you're in Texas or California, you come home and you turn on your air conditioning. And so the cost of this energy is unsustainable and not really good for Bitcoin miners. But when energy usage is at its lowest or off peak hours from 12 p.m. or 12 at night to 8 in the morning, well, then you have a great time for Bitcoin miners to be able to come online, consume that energy at more profitable rates for the utility and energy producers. This seems like a win, win, win for everyone. Opportunity number three. Bitcoin miners are just flat out better partners than our AI overlords. When there's a severe weather crisis or there's a need for people that actually need electricity to have it back, Bitcoin miners are able to shut off and turn off at a moment's notice. Let's compare this to someone like Tesla, who maybe they have a large AI training computer that's running in their Austin, Texas Gigafactory that's used to program and provide updates to all of their cars running their full service driving technology. Well, what if they need to make a critical update to all of the cars that are on the road driving themselves while you're asleep? Do you think that because there's bad weather outside or there's inclement conditions that they're just gonna turn that off for the sake of being a good partner? I don't think so. Bitcoin miners have already been doing this and have demonstrated this capability in places like Texas and Tennessee for years. And before you think this is just some crazy pie in the sky idea, this is already being done at several places around the world. 
In the United Arab Emirates, Bitcoin miners are soaking up stranded solar farm energy and desalination plant energy that would otherwise be wasted to profitably fund more renewable projects in the world. What about Iceland, where they have a large amount of potential hydropower that's not being monetized? While Bitcoin miners are going near waterfalls and actually consuming this energy through the mechanical output of this hydro or this water and turning it into revenue streams that are profiting Iceland. What about a village in rural Kenya where a company like Gridless with Eric Hersman is taking Bitcoin miners straight to a volcano and mining this stranded energy in order to build the infrastructure to power 5,000 homes in rural Kenya that otherwise wouldn't have been able to finance infrastructure projects to transmit that energy out to those rural places. A lot of people in the Bitcoin industry already know about Crusoe Energy, who's able to slash emissions by 63% and prevent the spewing of methane gas into the atmosphere by literally capturing that flared gas, putting it into a generator and mining Bitcoin with it. Win, win, win for everyone. There are Bitcoin miners like TerraWolf who use 93% of zero carbon energy sources in order to fund their Bitcoin operations through nuclear and through hydro. There are several other publicly traded miners like Core Scientific or Marathon who've already been capturing this trend. The solution is simple. Bitcoin actually makes renewable projects profitable. The next push that you're going to see versus real things that have been implemented in the wild is projects like what The Economist is pushing, TerraWatt, battery storage for electricity grids. It's taken us 20 or 30 years to get to 200 megawatts of battery storage for grids, but somehow we're gonna get to a gigawatt by 2030 and a terawatt of battery storage by 2050. I'm not a math guy, but that math doesn't math to me. Two obvious questions should arise again. Is the actual clean battery storage projects that are being built, are they actually clean? How are you gonna dispose and create these batteries in the first place? Coal and natural gas. And the next question that's obvious is, who's gonna pay for it? The IEA will say that we need more batteries. NVIDIA CEO, Jensen Wong, will say that we need the AI chips to actually be implemented so that AI can help us determine whether or not we should have electricity on it. It'll help us dynamically balance the grid. That sounds convenient for someone whose sole job is to sell more chips. Bitcoin mining seems to provide a real, tangible, practical, and already implemented solution to how do we bootstrap these AI projects? How do we profitably build out the infrastructure to fund this AI revolution. I'm all ears for feasible solutions, and to date, I haven't heard any. If Bitcoin mining isn't the solution to funding our AI revolution, then what is? I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments. This is part two of our Bitcoin in AI series. I'm gonna be diving deep for the next few weeks on the implication of Bitcoin as it relates to an AI future. So tune in next Tuesday on what we're covering next, Bitcoin in AI payments. and as always, I'm all about building real community, real expertise, real connections, real people engaging with you on your Bitcoin journey. I've had the pleasure for doing this for hundreds and thousands of people now, and I want to help you do this through Columbus. Head to joincolumbus.com if you want to find a Bitcoin community online to help you navigate your journey. And with that, we're signing off today. Hope that I was able to explain Bitcoin simply for you guys. This is Dante Cook. Happy stacking.